Rutgers got a 63-60 win over Northwestern. Let's take a look at some of the film on how they did it. We're going to start with Rutgers defense that held Northwestern to only 60 points. Boo Booey had 27 points on 7 of 14 shooting, but didn't score a field goal for the final 17 minutes of the game. We'll start with how Bowie got cooking and then how Rutgers adjusted from there. So this first play that we're going to look at is Rutgers is going to be in a 1-3-1 type zone. Um, and so Northwestern just swinging the ball up top. And this is just a really simple play, but it's also showing how Bowie got some good looks. And if you give Bowie good looks, that means he's going to get going and then be able to make some tough ones. So Barnheiser does a good job here of attacking the center. You really want to force this defense to collapse, and that's what, exactly what happens. Palmquist comes in, Williams comes in here. And so now as this happens, you have Fernandes down low, who's kind of guarding this weak side corner. And that's going to leave Bowie wide open to just step into this three. This next play that we'll look at will be Boo Booey's final field goal make of the entire game. But I think it's an important one because Rutgers seemed to adjust a little bit after this. And so it's going to be a pretty quick play, a pretty easy play. Just a simple high pick and roll. And Northwestern is spaced out down low, doing their thing, high pick and roll, letting Bowie go to work. And the thing to notice is one, Jermichael Davis right here, who had a, you know, he had a very good game. He just kind of gets caught on the screen. Um, it seems like he's a step or two late, really trying to get around this Nicholson screen. That combined with, as we pause right here, Amori has to have a hand up. It's as simple as that. Usually, um, if he's going to play a bit higher, then maybe he doesn't fully have to have his hand up, but he's kind of staying back at this level right here, not really hedging at all. And so if that happens against Bowie, you just have to put a hand up. And if you aren't or you're late doing it, Bowie's going to do that. So these next two plays we'll look at will show what Rutgers did to adjust on Bowie and at least make life tougher. Boo Bowie's talented that at some points he's just going to get good shots, but Rutgers did what they could to try to slow him down. Northwestern's going to start in their action right here. This is going to be zoom action, a, a screen into a handoff. Um, but Mullins gets it here, nothing comes from it, or sorry, Mullins does not get it there. It's a fake handoff, and then it's going to flow into a handoff right here. And so basically, I would say the thing to look at here is look at how Davis this time is above the screen getting into Bowie. And so Bowie had already, I believe, hit six threes at this point in the game. The Rutgers was just going to make him drive and they were going to make him drive and live with what happens. And that's exactly what happens here. It is, you know, they're, Davis probably wants to try to force him into Amore, but more than anything, he wants to make Bowie put the ball on the ground. He does. Bowie gets a decent look on the floater right there that he can definitely make, but that's a much harder shot than a wide open three. In addition to trying to force Bowie to drive, they also kind of adjusted their defensive scheme in general. And so in this one, as we kind of think back to different plays, Amori here on the screen had been kind of staying at this level, um, not really jumping up at all, but now it's turned into a hard hedge right here. And so basically they're just saying, we want the ball out of Boo Booey's hands. Generally, that's a good thing to do if you're a defense playing Northwestern. So rescreen's going to happen. And again, this hedge from Amori is going to come. Bowie recognizes it. And so he is going to just refuse this screen um, and, and does a good job of it. Simpson doesn't quite force him into the screen. Does a good job of it. But again, now Bowie is getting downhill. And, and it's weird to say because oftentimes, right, you get good shots at the rim and you want to try to force tough jumpers. But with how Bowie was cooking, you do just want Bowie to put the ball on the ground. You trust your, your interior defense, even with Amori out here. And so again, now Bowie is going, can make this floater 100%, but Hyatt's going to be there to contest a little bit, and you just rather have that than a wide open three. Rutgers did a good job of adjusting. If you are enjoying, please like and subscribe. So Rutgers interior defense has been elite all season, and this game was no different. Northwestern only took eight shots at the rim going five for eight, and they took 13 shots in the paint outside the restricted area, but they only made two. Northwestern has dominated this area on most games this season. They've been the best in the Big Ten in that area, but Rutgers interior defense is just so good at protecting the rim, protecting the paint, and forcing tough shots. So this play right here, gonna be another pick and roll. Uh, you're gonna get a rescreen here. And again, maybe Amori isn't fully on the hedge as he was before, but Amori is definitely staying up at the level Rutgers is putting two on the ball. And so what that's going to open up is, as we see right here, Matthew Nicholson is going to be just slipping to the rim. And so with two on the ball, there has to be a weak side rotation. And uh, truthfully, Jeremiah Williams probably should already be over there in positioning, tagging, tagging the role, really not trying to let Nicholson catch the ball at all. But that doesn't happen. And Nicholson is wide open here. But Jeremiah Williams just makes a great play here. He, yes, he wasn't over there in time, but he rotates quickly enough and just meets Nicholson at the apex for a huge block. 
There was a lot of floaters from Northwestern, that is what they like to do in general, but Rutgers just did a good job of making life a bit tougher. You're going to see another rescreen here, and Rutgers again puts two on the ball here, so that means there's going to be a rotation on their weak side. Ball gets flipped to Martinelli, and now Simpson comes up to rotate, which leaves Mullins open here on the wing. Uh, Martinelli decides not to pass, instead to drive, and so as I rewind here, He's going to drive. Hyatt gets back, though, and now Hyatt just plays good defense. Amori's there to able to tip it. Um, Martinelli likes getting to his floater a ton, but it felt like a pretty poor decision here, not swinging the ball and maintaining the advantage. Instead, tries to drive, and now he's going against Hyatt, and then also Amori down low, and that's just not going to end well often. This will be the last defensive play we look at, and just another really solid defensive play from Rutgers, especially after kind of a slow start on that end, where Northwestern kind of got what they wanted, especially Bowie. Rutgers just is, is able to be so good. So you can see here, ball's just kind of been swung around this entire time and, and has not touched the paints or inside the perimeter once. And so now, at this point, um, Barnheiser's just going to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. You see Fernandes up here is trying to basically deny Bowie the ball, just not let him touch it. And so now it's one-on-one. -on -one. And, and this was just kind of Northwestern's offense at times where they couldn't get anything to go, so they really relied on just trying to have somebody create. And again, this is just, you know, Northwestern's not able to get to the rim at all. Barnheiser's shoot a one-leg, 15-foot fadeaway. Just not going to result in good things for Northwestern often. Oscar Palmquist gave really good minutes and knocked down three very important threes late in the first half to help keep Rutgers at only a single digit deficit at half. This could have ballooned a lot larger if Palmquist didn't come in and hit these shots. So this first play right here is going to be a really just good set from Rutgers. This initial part right here where Admori down screens and Palmquist goes and sets a screen is called a ram screen, but Palmquist is going to ghost it, which means he's not going to make contact. Northwestern switches and it's going to turn into another pick and roll. And so right here, Northwestern generally wants to put two on the ball. That's kind of their defense against pick and roll. Nicholson kind of gets caught in between, not fully committing, but not dropping back either. And so now as Amori's going to roll here, Martinelli's going to have to come in and tag. And this is just a really good adjustment by Williams. He's looking for Amori, and you see that's where he wants to go with this jump. Um, and sometimes that can get you in trouble, but here makes the adjustment reading that this low man, Nick Martinelli, is going to come over and tag the roll. So now he finds Palmquist wide open at the top of the key really good pass there and Palmquist is able to knock it down and we have to talk about Jeremiah Williams Rutgers is 4-0 with him now and Williams has just been a major spark for this team on both ends he had 15 points five rebounds and five assists this game it's his ability to create shots that's so important Rutgers has been one of the worst offenses in the country for a large chunk of the season Williams doesn't always create the easiest shots for himself but he's been very, very good and very skilled at getting them to go, and Rutgers just absolutely needs it. So this play right here, high pick and roll, and it's going to be um, eventually just kind of one-on-one -on -one play here. So you can see here, nothing really comes from the screen, and sometimes this is just kind of what happens with Rutgers offense at times, and that's when they get in trouble is, okay, we ran our action, now what? Williams has solved that to a degree, and so it's just one-on-one -on -one ISO, gets downhill, and this isn't like an easy shot. It, it is not an easy shot. We talked earlier in the video about how Rutgers was forcing Northwestern to take these kinds of shots because they wanted to run them off the three-point line. But at the end of the day, Williams just has such good touch that it doesn't really matter. Once again, this is just going to be Jeremiah Williams going to work, and this comes at the most pivotal point in the game. So Simpson gets a high pick and roll, doesn't have a shot, and so now it's going to go to Williams here. Isolation ball. He's just going to try to get what he can, and this is good. De this is good defense from Barnheiser, straight up. This is good defense, and you force a tough shot. But Williams just kind of has that to him. This is such good footwork right here, kind of sidestepping past. It's almost like a euro step past Bowie here, just creating a bit of space from Bowie, and then using it to throw off Barnheiser and get enough space to get up a shot again. This is an insanely, insanely tough shot, but. If Williams is going to get it to go, Rutgers will take it every single time, and that's exactly what he does here with the friendly bounce. This was a great win for Rutgers, albeit the officiating did leave a lot to be desired. Northwestern is a team that does not turn the ball over much, but Rutgers was able to force the third highest turnover percentage for Northwestern on the season. Rutgers has really started to find themselves with Williams back, and he's been so good at just making everybody else around him better. The poor start to the season may be too much to overcome, but... 
And they do have some tougher games on the road coming up, but this team does look like they'll be trying their hardest to make a push for March. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and click here to see how Wisconsin was able to beat Ohio State in Chris Holtman's last game as head coach.